Hello there, and welcome back to another video. Recently, I've been reading the 40 stories celebrating 40 years of Return of the Jedi, where the stories each cover a character's point of view of an event that we haven't considered before. Over the next few videos, I'm going to be covering some of my favorite chapters in the book. Without further delay, let's get into the video. This chapter is called The Emperor's Red Guards, and is the story of what occurs in the Emperor's throne room, but from the point of view of the Emperor's guards. It begins after Palpatine gave them the order. Guards, leave us. They had left the room, yet were waiting behind a door, able to hear some of what was transpiring in the throne room. Worried at not being able to directly protect the one whom their existence revolved around, although the Emperor didn't need it, the guards watched as rebel ships were being destroyed in the space fight happening above the forest moon of Endor. The guard whose point of view this story is shared from begins to think about what he has sacrificed to get to this stage. The training, endless sparring, and ever-present threat of serious injury. Then, the final test. A fight to the death in a school in front of the Emperor himself before being chosen. The school features in Legends in the Crimson Empire, where it was an arena at the Imperial Royal Guard Academy, where aspiring members would fight each other. The guards shifted their attention to what could possibly be happening behind those doors as they discussed the Emperor's possible strategy at turning young Skywalker. Would he push the young rebel to attack Vader, to tap into his anger? What if he was pushing an attack on himself? That would be brilliant, a definite way to turn the rebel. The next thing they hear is a crash ringing out as wails of anguish overtook the initial sound, as the young rebel was getting what he deserved in their eyes. The sound of the lightning grew in its intensity as they believed Skywalker's fate to be sealed. The guards were enjoying his screams of begging. All of a sudden, shouts of no! began before more screams started again. Fear and dread began to fill the bodies of the Emperor's guards. Those did not sound like the screams of Skywalker, but that couldn't be though, could it? Their instincts were screaming at them to open the door, but they didn't want to disobey the Emperor's orders. This had to be an extenuating circumstance though, right? Instinct took over and one of the guards opened the door before the other could question them, as they were greeted by the young rebel dragging Darth Vader's limp body. Was he kidnapping him? Vader managed two words in their direction, leave us. Perhaps it wasn't a kidnapping. The two guards were frozen. Their training told them to follow Vader's order as he was the Emperor's right-hand man, yet something wasn't right. One guard ran into the room, looking for the Emperor, even if it meant being punished, whilst the other named Tork yelled at him to remain at his post. Unable to see the Emperor, a shiver was sent over the guard's body. The smell of burning flesh overtook the room as the stench led the guard to the reactor shaft, where the burn marks were big as smoke was rising. His worst fears realised, the guard drops to his knees as he let out a cry of anguish. Hawk entered the throne room, asking what was going on and where was the Emperor? His eyes landed on the reactor shaft before he says, let's go. Confused, the other guard asks, where? To avenge him, of course. With their new mission providing them both with some form of purpose, they take off in the direction they had seen the young rebel dragging Darth Vader. The guards reached the location of Darth Vader and Skywalker, where Vader was motionless, collapsed on the ramp of an Imperial shuttle. Skywalker was kneeling with his back facing them. The guards' initial thoughts were that the Emperor had succeeded. Skywalker had turned to the dark side and killed the Emperor, before killing Vader, which they had just walked in on. Unable to see any scenario in which the Emperor would fail, they had paused to ponder if this was really his genius master plan, one beyond their comprehension. They continued to move closer to Skywalker and the body of Vader before they stopped, confused. Skywalker turned around, he is streaming down his face. Even more confusing to the guards were his next words. Run, save yourselves. The battle station is crumbling. They remained there in shock as Skywalker began to drag Vader's body into the shuttle. As this was occurring, what had really happened hit the unnamed guard, whose point of view this story has been told from. He took it all in, the damage to Vader's suit, the absence of a lightsaber wound, him telling them to leave us. Skywalker hadn't changed sides and killed the Emperor. Vader had done it and died in the process. Vader's reasoning wasn't even the most shocking part of this revelation. The Emperor had failed. Their almighty, can-do-no-wrong Emperor had failed. The other guard, Tork, who was driven by his duty to the Emperor, began to follow the young rebel as he asked his fellow guard what he was doing. Why didn't he attack him? The other guard was feeling lost. This person whom his whole life surrounded was gone, and so with him his sense of purpose. This causes a divide between the two guards in the hangar. Hawk refused to believe that Vader had turned and killed the Emperor, no matter how much his fellow guard attempted to convince him of his theory. Hawk is stubborn in his sense of duty to the Emperor, vowing to avenge him, before heading back to Coruscant to see what plan he has in place for the future. The other unnamed guard knows this was not supposed to happen. This was not a part of the Emperor's master plan, and there is no plan in place for the future. The Emperor had failed. As he pondered what was on the other side for him after the collapse of the Empire, he tried to save himself. As he began to move, Tork stood in front of him, ready for a duel with his pike. A duel in shoes, and they lock pikes, as they each take one hand off their weapon and reach for their blaster pistols. Tork moves his ever so slightly, causing the other guard to react by firing at him. As Tork drops, he got a shot off which flew past the unnamed guard as he ran. The shot hit a nearby ship 
causing a large slab of steel to break off, crushing the guard's legs beneath it. Assuming his fate, the guard begins to think about how he was going to die a coward's death before closing his eyes. All of a sudden, the pressure on his legs was relieved slightly, before it went away completely and Luke Skywalker was standing there, having used the force to free the guard from the rubble. Skywalker yelled at him to hurry as he continued to move the debris in the hangar so his shuttle could leave. The guard barely made it off the Death Star before it exploded. As he was hurtling from the explosion, he began to think about where he would go from here. The life that had just ended for him was all he had ever known. A small part of him thought about finding the young rebel that saved him. He would have a lot of information to share after all. Another part of him wanted to fly into another ship because that initial thought crossed his mind. He cleared his mind of all these thoughts as he took a moment to mourn the Emperor, and then himself. Where would he go from here? This was one of my favourite chapters in 40 stories celebrating 40 years of Return of the Jedi, as it was another example of why Luke Skywalker is one of my heroes. There are a few more chapters in this book that I cannot wait to cover for you guys. In the meantime, my friend Isaac from the Movie Pod and I have recently started a weekly Star Wars show. We've called it Always Two There Are, inspired by Star Wars Theory's weekly show he would host with Josh from Den of Nerds. We go live every Saturday at 5am Pacific Time, which is 8am Eastern Time. If this is the last piece of my content you'll see before Christmas, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I appreciate all of your support this year. It has seriously blown my mind. Until next time, may the Force be with you, always.